I have a, a, this, this new little book of memos, rants, provocations, and fragmentary essays. Uh, and I just wanted to read a few things from this, a few memos, because I was sort of inspired by Lillian's poem last night. Lillian Allen, for those of you who weren't here, read a poem in which she gave advice uh, to other writers. Now, this is advice I'm actually giving to myself, but to a younger self. A magazine called The New Quarterly, based in Waterloo, not that far from here, asked a bunch of writers to you know, write up a list of advice they wish they could give to their younger self, to, you know, to be relayed back through some sort of quantum wormhole. Um, so I, I wrote uh, 17 items, and I'll just read, a, uh, I'll read about 10 of them now. They're very short. They're, I call them memos, but they're kind of like epigrams or aphorisms. So these memos uh, to be relayed back through time to a writer starting out. One, interest is never enough. If it doesn't haunt you, you'll never write it well. What haunts and obsesses you into writing may, with luck and labor, interest your readers. What merely interests you is sure to bore them. <laughs> Two, let failure be your workshop. See it for what it is, the world walking you through a tough but necessary semester free of tuition. Three, embrace oblivion. The sooner you quit fretting about your current status and the long shot of posterity, the sooner you'll write something that matters while actually enjoying the effort, at least some of the time. And I'll skip on to five. Ignore Lord Byron who wrote that we of the craft are all crazy. He was largely right, of course. <laughs> Ignore him anyway. To romanticize the writer is pursued by furies, enthused by muses, beset by demons. This is nothing but professional self-importance and self-pity. Writers have no monopoly on poverty, humiliation, self-doubt, or aggressive inner demons. Close your door and get on with it. <laughs> Six, momentum and enthusiasm can mean pretty much the same thing. When working on a longer project, ruthlessly guard and prolong the momentum which is good advice for a writer in his 20s, not so easy to, to give or take when you've got a family, right? Just um, Seven, in writing as in life, personality is not character. Never try to be cute, to be winning, to audition for the reader. Eight, never try to be cool. A writer afraid of seeming square will never, never write anything truly cool. The purest definition of cool, after all, is not caring what people think. Nine, stand on the side of artifice, of worked and earned elaborated form. Life gives us enough of life. We approach art for something different, more distilled, catalyzed, charged, and signifying. Um, Twelve, stop straining to be original, and with luck and applied time, it just might happen. Thirteen, you can only write authentically within the bounds of your own sensibility, but you can read and appreciate far beyond them to develop a broad and generous vision you've got to. Uh, 15, careerist writers don't have friends, only allies. <laughs> this is reason enough not to be careerist. <laughs> 16, careerist writers don't confront and relish challenges, they crash into obstacles, which they naturally resent and fear. This is reason enough not to be careerist. <laughs> 17, there can be just one final arbiter of your work. This is the last one. Refuse to appoint anyone else as your judge and appraiser, executioner, potential approver, the one reader, fellow writer, critic, editor, or publisher whose acceptance of your work will stand as an ultimate verification, a proof of arrival, relieving you of that imposter feeling every artist knows, a feeling that simply shows that your aesthetic conscience is still active. Resign yourself to the road. There's no arriving. There's no map either, come to think of it, but the sun is rising and the radio is on. Well.